Hey VC, boys and girls, uh, Jeff back again. I uh, just done do my uh, weekly stack videos so and get all this filed away again. Hope you're all doing well. It's a uh, rather uh, sweltering uh, heat here in the Washington DC area and I guess for the next week. I found some really good deals on Discogs and ordered them and some other stuff. That I, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, I'll show you some cool stuff I figured out. I'll tell you some good stuff I figured out. Um, so this is something I just became aware of. Obviously, if you've got an American Express, you can go on um, uh, their, you know, their website or their app, and you know how they do those uh, offers. Well, they're doing this thing where you get like five dollars for every ten dollars you spend for, you know, local businesses, small businesses. Well, apparently, I've heard some people are doing this. You can go on, um, it works on PayPal, and every shop on PayPal, um, yeah, if you use your American Express, um, or every, uh, I mean on eBay, if you go on eBay, it's like every record shop uh, counts, or even your record store, I guess, your local record store, anything that's not a major business, anything you spend $10 or more, um, you can only use it once per store, but you get f uh, $5 credit. Um, I think it's, it comes in, I don't know how it works, I'm guessing it's just like that, you know, that pool of money you get at the end of the month um, as a bonus. But for every $10, you get $5 back. So you can, you know, go pick up some $15 records on eBay. And as long as you're doing it from different shops, every time it's 5 bucks apparently. So I might be trying that out, but unfortunately it's like a freaking heat wave now. So yeah, lucky for you uh, American Express users. Um, so I'll be, I'll be using my American Express a lot more in the next few months, I think. So I'm gonna get some free albums back. Uh, anyway, yeah, I got a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Some of these won't be surprises. This is stuff I picked up over a few weeks. Um, some stuff new, some stuff uh, some thrifts. So let's just jump in there. Um, yeah, this one. Yes, yeah, you see this show up every once in a while, but uh, yeah, apparently he passed away the day I bought this. <laughs> yeah, um, so Charlie Daniels, uh, Country Rock. It, it's pretty decent. It's, it's not one I'd pay up for, but yeah, it's, I think you can find these in bargain bins. It's, it's worth a pickup for the bargain bin price. Here, this is a quite good one. Um, so, Feeling of Love. This is, I think, one is it? It's, they're, uh, I think it's from France or something. Uh, Steve, I did send you one of these. So, I, of the two I have, I think this is the favorite I have. I had duplicates of the other one, so that's why I got that one, Steve. They're both good. Uh, so what this is, um, it's kind of like garage revival, little noise rocky thing going on. Um, so it's quite good. So yeah, um, the label in the states went out of business. I, I got a whole bunch of these on the on the cheap. Uh, went went out of business. They had a fire sale. It's like everything was a box. I just bought the entire label catalog. And it was a label I really liked, so I was, like, I was really happy. So I ended up with some duplicates because some got lost in the mail and then they showed up later. And uh, yeah, I've been giving those out, so Steve got some of those. But uh, yeah, good stuff. So Feeling of Love, and this one's called Dissolve Me. So it was on Kill Shaman, which is uh, no longer with us. But uh, yeah, again, it's a repress from, I think it was uh, Born Bad Records in overseas. Yep. Oh, here's a another, here's a weird one for you. Uh, UFO or Die. This is um, Yamatsu Ai of uh, Boredom's fame with uh, Yoshimi the drummer as like another side project of theirs. They were running concurrent to um, uh, Boredom's in the 90s. So this one came with uh, it's, you know Skin Graph Records. Skin Graph likes like weird comics and stuff too. So like comes with a comic book. Uh, it's a different, um, different kind of hardcore noise artists doing uh, comics, and the music itself, is, yeah, it's definitely more in the experimental vein and just more fun <laughs> than. But uh, yeah, I, I've seen these like you can still bought like they did a repress I want to say recently, so it's, it hasn't gone out of press yet. Um, but yeah, even the originals like this, I think you can pick up for like five bucks uh, all day long. So. That's fun. So for for certain people, like Sean would like that. Uh, another one Sean would like. 
Yeah, Ugly Head. Uh, I believe these guys were out of Richmond. Yeah, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, again, hardcore. They were part of that uh, Richmond hardcore scene in the 90s. Um, I was very lucky. Like, I I lived, uh, you know, where they're pulling down that monument uh, of uh, General Lee, which I, I never liked. Uh, I lived, like, a block from there, and, like, about two blocks from there, there's like, a bunch of punk clubs. Um, I was there, and, like, two of those punk clubs got busted up by the police, because <laughs> I used to go, like, two, three times a week. Um, you know, I was buddies with one of the doormans, so I got into some shows for free sometimes. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're all the crazy stuff we used to go through, like, Murder Junkies, and a lot of, um, yeah, Vasts was always playing, and, um, I'm not Vast, I'm a Veil. <laughs> Avail, the, the dude had a tattoo parlor, like, two doors down from the club. Uh, but, yeah, yeah it was like a lot of uh, fire marshal visits. <laughs> I, I think uh, uh, naked drummers in front of the storefront windows sticking stuff up his poop chute and tossing it at people. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I closed that club down. <laughs> but, yeah, Ugly Head, uh, it's pretty good hardcore. So, yeah, I, I don't think they go for a lot. The good 90s stuff. Uh, this was part of um, X, I think it was, I want to say their third album. Yeah. So, original US pressing. Um, paid, I think it paid eight bucks for it uh, last week. But yeah, I gave it a listen. It was really good. Um, I'm still, I think Los Angeles is still my favorite, but I do have their other two albums on vinyl, which I'll have to dig out because I haven't played them in a long time. Oh, this is a classic. Uh, Rip-offs. This is, uh, what's his face? Uh, Greg Lowry from um, Supercharger. This is the group, the big group, anyway, that he formed right after Supercharger. Yeah, I really don't think they actually got the, uh, yeah, maybe I have a cover on my face. Um, I don't think they actually got the two Grammy Award nominations or whatever. Winner. I don't, I'm pretty sure they did not. It was just a joke. It was funny. Um, so, yeah, hard-hitting garage bunk. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, there's some good seven inches. Uh, My baby, yeah. Um, Dolomite was good. Shadow. Zodiac. Can't stop me out. This is a, just chock full of hits. I'm, I, I think Supercharger is a little bit better, but Ripoffs are still damn good. Uh, here's another recent purchase. So Swell Maps. Uh, I think that's their second album. Some really good uh, UK post punk stuff. Um, I definitely need to pick up their other releases that came out uh, that got re released very recently because I think the original will go for some bucks. But um, yeah, I love that UK scene. So I, I've been picking up more and more of that. I always loved it back in the 90s, but it was always really hard to get. And But nowadays everything's getting repressed, so I'm really happy to pick up all this stuff like uh, them, Wire, and magazine. Magazine needs more represses, but I do need to get some more magazine albums. That's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, this is a comp I picked up in Japan for a few bucks. So, uh, Echo and the Bunny Man, Songs to Learn, really clean copy. Uh, so has the, that's the OB strip. It yeah, kind of just you know, um, has the image on it. It's pretty cool. So, it has all their like really big hits on it. So, um, I have a few Echo and the Bunny Man, so on that uh, tag, I guess I would actually say I, I actually prefer Echo and the Bunny Man to you too because I have a lot of Echo and the Bunny Man. I don't have that much U2, but I do need to get more U2. I'm just kind of waiting to find it in the, the bargain bins uh, or you know thrift store or something because they're, they're not that uncommon. I, I don't know why I just haven't run into them. But anyway, yep, Echo and the Bunny Man, good one. Good comp. Uh, here's another comp, but it's uh, it actually plays better than the albums. It's really crazy. So this is a uh, um, this is the, I want to say the second release of this, uh, the Can Cannibalism, and they have, uh, so I think this is now on CD, they released this Cannibalism 1, or Volume 1, and there's multiple Cannibalisms on um, CD, but I think on vinyl this was, might have been the only one on vinyl. Yeah, but what it is, is they, uh, they basically grabbed a, a bunch of tracks, um, songs, tracks, whatever, uh, from across a whole bunch of albums, and they um, a lot of them are alternative takes or remixed in some way, and it just kind of, it just really flows. Um, actually, I think it flows better than the original albums, which is kind of crazy. So even though it's a comp, it actually flows better than their normal albums, which is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, if you know Can, they, they can get a little funky sometimes, and they can get kind of industrially at times. So it they basically kind of took 
uh, the, they did, there's less variety on this, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So it kind of flows a little better, um, but it, it's super. Uh, unfortunately, does not have my favorite Gant songs on it, but I, that was intentional. So a lot of the uh, the songs I didn't get um, a lot of attention maybe on their albums or front and center here, and they you know their alternative mixes of it, uh, all all different takes basically. And yeah, it just it just really works really really well as an album. So yeah, even though it's a comp, yeah, don't shy away from this. It, it is really good. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a double, it's a gate pulled. Um, it goes into yeah, it was, it was kind of mixed by one of the band members and one of their buddies, as I recall. So custom labels, kind of cool. It's got a can on. So this is a late '70s pressing, I want to say, in Japan. So, I think, uh, I think these do go for a few bucks. Um, I think I paid it roughly 15 to 20 at a thrift store in Japan. <laughs> I was like, 20 bucks, that's kind of high. I was like, well, I was can. That's probably not that high. I'm buying that. <laughs> so, yeah, quite glad I picked that up. That's a good one. Uh, this one, another cheapie I picked up a long time ago. I just never got around to listening to it. Um, found this sealed for uh, a new, new old stock, I guess. This is Neil Diamond's 2014 album. It's a double, double LP. Uh, picked it up at a bookstore. It's one of those like discount bookstores. It has like the one of the other, you know, your Barnes and Nobles, they can't sell stuff. They sell it to the other store. So they have a lot of new old stock. Yeah, I think I, I paid like three bucks for this sealed. Uh, so yeah, Neil Diamond's new stuff's actually pretty good. So um, there's another one that came out around the same time. It has like a black and white cover. I remember that being quite good too. Uh, so yeah, so I think there were some really there were some standout ones. Uh, I think especially I think the third side especially had some good ones. Yeah, Melody Rose of course and Better Days. Nothing but a heartache was quite good. Which I I'm not sure if that's the same as the Bonnie Tyler one. I think it might be actually. But it's a very different sound to it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely like his early, early stuff uh, better. But and I do have a comp of that. But yeah, I, I might keep this one around. Um, yeah, but it, it's probably worth checking out if you do see it for a few bucks. I wouldn't really pay up for it. Well, this this is running long, so sorry guys. I'm trying to keep this under twenty. Uh, this one was another recent pickup. Uh, Nils Lofkin paid a couple bucks for it. I think on Discogs these go for at 15-ish. Um, I looked it up. But yeah, uh, don't shy away from this one, man. Uh, of everything I'm showing, this is quite possibly the favorite of all of them. <laughs> it was one of the absolute cheapest ones. Uh, but this is an incredible album. Uh, so, of course, he was in um, was it Crazy Horse and uh, uh, oh, uh, E Street Band. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Springsteen. So, really gifted guitarist. Um, so... Uh, this was like mid 70s I want to say but it, it kind of fits in with the stuff he was doing on Crazy Horse at the time um, but yeah it, this is a super 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 album so if you ever see it pick this up man. <laughs> do not hesitate it is super um, yeah this was sealed I picked up again for this was under two bucks I think it was like a buck fifty or something uh, Tracy Nelson uh, she started out kind of like a blues rock singer. Uh, this one's actually more of a um, soul album. It doesn't look it, but it is actually soul. Uh, country country soul, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. So she does a cover of uh, Come See About Me, of course. Got the title track. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, was all, it was all really good. So again, I don't think these go for much. So if you see them, pick them up. It's, it's a really good album. Yeah, another really good one I picked up on cheap recently. Uh, enough said, Moody Blues. <laughs> so if you see this one, again, uh, I think this is the first press again. Gold, gatefold. Just a pretty chill psych. Pop psych, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's really chill. Uh, this was a new purchase. So these are going for, I think I picked this up for like 12 bucks on Amazon. And I had a bunch of points, so I just used them. <laughs> so I paid like a buck for this. Uh, this is one I've been looking at, Mo Tucker, or Maureen Tucker. Um, so from the Velvet Underground, she was the drummer. And so how, um, this is a comp, and if I was to take it out of the shrink, uh, this is actually peelable, which I haven't done, but it's, yeah, kind of, I guess it's supposed to be like the banana on their uh, Velvet's uh, first album. 
But yeah, this one has her version of um, I'm Waiting for the Man with uh, John Cale and Sony Vincent on the guitar. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Pale Blue Eyes, again, Lou Reed, Kim Gordon, uh, Daniel Johnson, Don Fleming, and uh, Scott Jarvis. I know Scott Jarvis somewhere. So someone, that's jogging my memory. Uh, someone jogged my memory. Her version of Heroin Solo. I'm um, sticking with you with uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Richmond of, um, oh God, uh, Modern Lovers. Uh, da, 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 da. That's interesting. Guess I'm falling in love. Um, round and round. Will you love me tomorrow? Her version, which I think is solo. Her, um, Andy about Andy Warhol, and uh, last night, which I, which I think is um. There's also a Sunday's version, which is a longer version. This actually was put out by Sunday's, I think. It's on white vinyl, of course, because glue. Yeah. So Sean, unfortunately. Reminded me about her uh, tea party rantings, ravings, whatever. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Her, her politics are somewhat uh, crazy for these days. Yeah, not crazy, but her politics are rather shocking. Uh, but yeah, super good album, especially if you like the Velvet Underground. Check that out. Um, a little more folky um, sounding versions of those. Yeah, another good one I picked up a long time ago. Probably overpaid for it, but uh, Carol King Music. I think this came out right after Tapestry. Uh, not quite as good as Tapestry, but still an extremely good album. Um, worth picking up if you see it. A uh, reasonable price. Again, uh, first pressing, gatefold. Don't want to spend a lot of time on these guys, but yeah. So it has insert with the lyrics and so on. It's a good listen. Uh, some 7 inches. I think I just showed these. Uh, magazine. Love magazine. Um, Give me everything backed with the B-side, I Love You Big Dummy, which I think only appears on this and maybe some of the live stuff. And uh, Bakamano with the X-rated cover, uh, kind of Chicago hardcore. And I found Vinyl Richie's uh, Doppelganger. There you go. Is that you, Richie? Pat. There you go. Uh, this was, I showed this, of course, uh, in the last video. But I didn't realize at the time, that is the misprint. So this is the rarest version of this. So, yeah. So $2 paid. In the sh uh, still in the shrinks. Got the original SST tag in there. I'm not pulling it out because I'll probably rip the shrink off. But, yes. If you don't know it, Super Album. Not my favorite back bag, but it's it's up there. It's way up there. Um, so My War. Good old uh, LA Hardcore there. This is another part of that $2 up thing again paid two bucks and it's worth way more than that uh revolutionary ensemble not for everyone but yeah very very free jazzy free jazz with uh what's his name uh, leroy jenkins on uh, violin and viola um this was super i uh, picked up this same batch um listened to this last night really good boots a nice clean copy uh Captain Beefheart. Uh, first half is kind of very free jazzy, actually. So a very jammy, free jazzy um, kind of fusion. But the, yeah, the first track or two are very just free jazz, kind of freak out, art rocky kind of stuff. And then the B side is his more um, blues rocky stuff. Yeah, and that, I was talking to Andrew about that, you know, Tales in the Crate, but yeah. <laughs> That's where it came from. So this is a UK comp. Has uh, was it Spotlight Kid and Lick My Details? It's one of those double LP deals. Uh, this thing is minty, minty. I picked up for Japan, possibly overpaid for it, but yeah, you never see that in, in that condition either. It, that thing looks like it's never been played, but uh, yeah, awesome, awesome one. Um, I, there's a bunch of these on boot, um, on uh, what do you call it, Discogs. So it might be worth checking out. So, yeah. Hope everyone's doing well. Stay safe out there. And I ran way longer than I was intending on this video, but that was a lot of good stuff in that stack. Um, so take care, everyone, and stay safe. Cheers. And for those who are wondering, I think the crowding is done. I think it's done. I just need to do the, uh, the caulking now, so that's for maybe tomorrow. Uh, take care, everyone.